Hi guys, it is Mal from MM Tool and Machinery or mmtoolparts.com. And today I'm going to show you guys how to replace the switch on a DeWalt reciprocating saw. The model number here on this one is DC385, but it might be pretty similar if you have other models. Um, so we're going to go ahead and replace that switch. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is just remove this battery. The battery, of course, is just going to slide right out. We'll set that aside and then we can get started taking this housing apart. So on this model, of course as always there is a handful of screws that hold this thing together. And in this case, there's one screw down here um, at the very back of the handle that is smaller than the rest of the screws. So this one you're going to, in my case, I'm going to use a smaller drill bit to remove that. Make sure my drill is going in the right direction. I'm gonna set that one aside. I'm going to get a bit for the rest of these. Okay, now all of my screws are released and I should be able to just pull this housing straight apart. So here of course is your switch that you're going to replace. This is like the, the trigger lock, so we're going to want to make sure that we pay attention to this piece when we're putting the new switch back in. So basically, old switch is just going to pop right out. That opens it up to show you those wire leads that we need to disconnect from the bad switch. I should say you can see here that the switch is bad. It's been, you can see like considerable wear and some charring on that switch. Um, mostly in this case, this has just happened from regular use, regular wear and tear, where you can see this point on the battery where these stem style batteries are consistently pushed back up into the tool. The, these points here and these points here are just going to kind of be battling each other and it's going to result in a little bit of wear and tear. Of course, as you use the tool, um, heat is also going to be generated and that's going to just take its toll on any of the components inside the tool. So as you use it, uh, those pieces are just going to get a little worn, get a little hot and eventually need to be replaced. Oh, this one is stuck on there. Good. There we go. Shimmy that off a little bit. And then we're going to grab our new switch, which obviously looks a whole lot better. So we're simply going to replace these wire leads in exactly the same way we pull them off. I should be able to just snug that one down with my fingertips. And then I'll use a little extra pressure with those pliers to get them on there really good. There we go. Okay, once these babies are on ultra tight, we just need to put the switch back into its space in the housing. Of course, there's going to be, there's these grooves in the housing here and another little corner right there that these pieces on the switch are just going to snug directly into. So the housing basically guides you, guides each of these pieces back into place. Then our next obstacle is fiddling with this trigger lock. So the trigger lock, actually I'm gonna pull this out and show you guys. The trigger lock has these two pieces here that are going to fit into pieces on the back of the switch as well. So of course, you can lock that down if you don't want the tool to be used or just simply as a safety feature, um, you can lock it so that the trigger, if depressed, it will not engage the tool. So let me just, that piece there needs to fit into that piece there. And now that that is snapped into place, I want to make sure I can still use this, so that is still functional. My switch is in all the right places there. And now I'm just going to replace that handle. Before I screw all those back in, I just want to make sure that my that, that trigger lock is in exactly the right place. And as you can see, this is a good example. I have my wire pinched a little bit there. So even though I'm real careful and I know what I'm doing, even I can pinch a wire. Let me make 
sure that wire is tucked in there good. Toggle that trigger back into place. Make sure that's still functional. And so as you can see, when I have that activated, trigger's not gonna pull. So this thing is working. And we can go ahead and replace all of those screws. Replace that final little screw. Now we'll replace our battery very gently to be good to that brand new switch. We just test it out. Unlock the trigger and we're good. Okay guys, that takes care of replacing the switch on your DeWalt DC385. Um, if you do have any other questions or any other repairs you'd like to see us do for you, please let us know. Give us a call, send us an email, write comments below, keep watching our videos, and uh, go ahead and buy your parts and get any schematics that you need for future repairs on our website, mmtoolparts.com. Thanks guys.